my rainwater is overflowing. I'm trying to keep up with it this morning. It's been pouring rain and I am almost out of my containers. Oh my gosh, wait until you guys see how many I have inside. But I've been out here all morning. The rainwater is freezing too. So it's really cold sticking my hand into. But uh, what, you know, what we do for our plant babies. So the rainwater fills up my buckets and then I've got my water containers that I fill up and that's what I keep inside the house. All my rainwater, that's what all those uh, containers are. The distilled water bottles, because I'm greedy as heck when it comes to collecting rainwater. I mean, like it's, it's exciting here in the desert when it actually finally rains because it doesn't happen too often. And uh, when it does, I'm out there. I'm out there having a blast, grabbing my rainwater for the plant babies. So I've been working on cleaning up the plant room. I still have some things to do. I've got some plants on the floor down here that I don't think I'm gonna leave down there. Um, there's some that I need to consolidate still, like over this way. I'm still working on these micans. I might end up with two more large pots of micans because these are surprisingly growing much faster than I thought in here in this plant room. So I got to get those uh, consolidated still. And, oh yeah, I did have to move the plants that I had up on my table, the crawlers. They were over here on this table under my grow light and they were getting too much light. So I had to move them. Aha, I see Michael has been trying to feed my plants coffee again, leaving his coffee cups in here for them. Michael likes to come in the plant room. He really enjoys being in here. He likes to read in here. I was thinking I should probably get him a more comfortable chair in here because this is just like my little vanity chair here because um, I'm, I'm usually just sitting at this desk doing my makeup in the morning. He likes to come in here and sit in the, in the jungle and uh, read his books and drink his coffee. <laughs> All right guys, we're in the living room and I've got a customer coming for these two plants. I've got the Hartley Philodendron and the Philodendron Brazil. So she's gonna be here in about 10 minutes to pick these up. But yeah, that's gonna open up a lot of space and I do like them, but I don't love them, you know? All right guys, so our next project is to fix the vent up here. I'm trying to keep hot air from blowing in here on the plants. It actually ends up on the other side of the room because I have the vents uh, closed all the way upwards and so that's not working so michael's gonna help me fix it he's gonna block that off yeah rigid insulation rigid insulation so he just cut out a piece and stuffed it in there yeah because uh, that was originally a uh, swamp cooler so it's just permanently open to the outside yeah, that's definitely gonna help out a lot because it was blowing actually all the way across the room even though I tried to shut the vent as, as closed as I could get it. It would shoot all the way over here and end up coming down on the plants over here. <laughs> All right guys, so this video I'm just doing some wintertime projects and then also some updates in the living room. So it's gonna be probably filmed over a period of a couple of days at least. So I'll just hang out with you as I'm doing these little projects. So I decided I'm gonna consolidate all of my alocasia black velvets. I have, let's see, I have four of them right now. So these are my bigger ones that I just unpotted. And then also I have two other ones I'm gonna check on and see if I can squeeze those in here too. So my alocasia black velvets, I'm gonna be potting into this this pot, I'm gonna consolidate them all in here. I'm just trying to kind of clean up around the plant room and have less little pots of the same plant around and just kind of, you know, getting them all together into less pots. So the mix I'm using is just my coarse climbing philodendron mix because these alocasia black velvet, they hold so much water already in the stems and the leaves. I don't want to um, have them in a mix that's too dense. I wanna make sure it's really well draining for them. Oh, hopefully I can fit them all in here. I, I noticed that they do seem to enjoy being more root bound compared to having, you know, excess space in their pots, um, at least for this particular variety. And then here's my other one that I did pot up already in here. Oh, you guys can see. Um, so here's the other one that I did already pot up in here and it's doing great. It's straightened out and everything. And it, it had those two other yellow leaves that it lost when it came in from import. This was an import from Indonesia. Um, it's really liking the soil and it's got a new leaf start there, but I kind of want to put it in here with this one. Okay, it really likes that coarse philodendron mix that I put it in. That was kind of just an experiment, but oh yeah, it's got all kinds of new root growth. So I'm going to try not to disturb that new root growth. I just want to 
kind of slip it in here without kind of messing that up. I wasn't sure how that climbing philodendron mix was going to go for the alocasia black velvet, but my experience with these in the past has been that because they're, they have such succulent stems and their leaves are pretty thick and hardy, they tend to hold on to a lot of their own water. Oh, you know what? Shoot. I've actually got one more that I want to put in here too. I've got a little black velvet that has actually been kind of struggling because I tried to put it in a self-watering pot and it didn't love it. It did not love it at all. So since these alocasia black velvet naturally have a spreading habit, I'm hoping they don't mind, you know, a community pot like this. This is the one that I was struggling with and it's a little baby. I tried to do a self-watering pot with it. Um, it. It's been getting a lot of edema though, so I've got to take it out of here. It's just... It's in a super coarse mix too, but the combination of that particular pot, maybe maybe I had too much wick in there. It's got roots growing through the bottom here. So I'm just gonna go and take it out though because it's been getting edema. It might be hard to see, but I'm just sliding this out. It's got some great roots on it. Yeah, that pot was just holding on to too much water. The roots weren't getting enough oxygen. It's in a really coarse mix though, so I'm not gonna disturb the roots. I'm just gonna slip this directly into this pot here. Hopefully just getting it out of the self-watering pot will help it out. All right, there we go. A community pot of alocasia black velvet. And this is the little one here, the little one in the front. That was the single leaf one. So yeah, I feel better about those kind of just being in the same pot with these other ones here. It's just a really nice change to have some plants that aren't constantly having to climb and always needing, you know, upgraded moss poles or coconut husk poles because uh, they're out climbing them. So it's nice to have something that's a little more compact and I can just put it on the shelf and just enjoy it, you know, without it without it trying to go somewhere. So it's, it's a nice change. So I'm gonna go find a place for this and uh, and then I gotta clean up my mess here. All right guys, I wanna show you this Anthurium carmelins. It's pretty pretty rough looking, right? Like it, it had a hard time. This was an import from Equigenera from their Ecuador location. I've actually had this since October is when it arrived and I almost lost it. Like I thought it was going to be a goner. I was trying everything I could to try to save it and get it to reroot. It basically came in. It wasn't looking too good. It ended up losing all of its roots pretty quickly and I was going to have to start it over, but I couldn't get like it had a little bit of chunk to it, but I couldn't get it to reroot. And the chunk looked like where all the other roots had been. It looked like all of those nodes had been spent, but I wasn't sure. So I was thinking if I can get any kind of you know, action to happen with this plant. I'm going to need to stress it out. And so I cut the chunk off and basically that woke up the very last option on this plant. Look at this. That's a very last node too. That was our last shot. It gave me one root, one root, which I'm so stoked on. So I'm going to be um, putting this into perlite now because it's ready to get out of water. You can tell it's ready to get out of water when the roots are growing straight upwards for the surface because they need more oxygen. So it's ready to go. So anyway, that was my last shot. I felt like it was like that moment from Dumb and Dumber where it's like, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> like that very last fresh node was like the last shot up there. I had just enough energy to give me one root and that leaf is on its way out. You can see that's like barely hanging on, right? So anyway, uh, I'm gonna switch this water out, um, probably use the same jar and just fill it with perlite, put a reservoir in there and get that rooting as much as I can and keep uh, keep an eye on it though in the perlite. So I don't wanna put this into soil or anything yet. And on the chunk, we were able to activate a node, which I will show you guys, at least I think so. So it's in this box here. I'll show you guys that in like a propagation update video though. All right, I got my perlite, add some to my jar. Yeah, that was a close call. Boy, that thing was almost a goner. As soon as I see more root growth, like if that one root can put out a bunch of secondary roots, that would be awesome. And then after it feels a little safer to pot this up, then I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm not counting my chickens before my eggs hatch or whatever that saying is, <laughs> but I'm not going to count my plants before my root grows, but we'll see. All right, there we go. Now I'll keep an eye on that and I'll update you guys, hopefully with some good news in the future. Okay, I've got my jungle velvet here. I've got to get this potted up because I'm pretty sure it has outgrown the pot that it's currently in. Hold on. <laughs> Let me get a grip here. 
Oh, right. Oh, okay. Yep. We got some fuzzy white roots coming through the bottom of the pot. Oh yeah, that is way overdue for getting repotted. There we go. So the roots are super healthy on that one, but it is definitely overdue for getting repotted. I'm not gonna disturb that root ball. I think I'm just gonna try putting it directly in to the next pot. So I'm using this pot. So it'll have at least about two inches all the way around it and like three inches more depth. So this mix has cocoa peat, cocoa chips and fiber, pumice, perlite, horticultural charcoal. So it's coarse, it's well draining, it's got a lot of moisture retention capability, but also at the same time, it allows the roots to breathe. So even though these, these Calathea or Gopersia, even though they do like moisture, they, they can still get root rot um, if they are in too much of a waterlogged soil. So I wanted to get this potted up before uh, before spider mites discover that it's uh, dry and root bound <laughs> because spider mites, like as soon as these plants get stressed out, spider mites find them so fast and they just descend on them. And I do have a couple of marks. Oh, you guys can't see that. Hold on. Well, I'll show you this leaf down here. Um, you can see the yellowing on that leaf. That was from excess moisture being held in its original soil. So that happened a while ago though. But yeah, these jungle velvets, oh my gosh, these are like my favorite, my favorite Calathea, Gopersia. I just love the velvety leaves on these. They're so gorgeous. Oh heck yeah, look at that Philodendron Patricia leaf spike. Ooh, that one's getting long. I can't wait to see that one unfurl. There's the community pot of Alocasia black velvet. They're so cute. Aren't those things cute? Man, I just love them so much. I, I want them to love me back. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm going to try my best with these things. I have had different experiences. There's been some in the past that I had that I overwatered. I've killed one um, by not root rot, but the corm actually got soft and started to rot. So I messed one up that way. And then I've had a little, this little baby one that I've been struggling with. So eventually I feel like if I keep trying, eventually I will figure these things out. This leaf, I feel like is going to be on its way out here. This is the newest leaf. That one it has a different color because it just, un it just open basically. So that's like a really fresh leaf there. Yeah. They're a little bit curly right now. I don't know. I had it in its original pot, uh, its original nursery pot with the original soil for a while. And I think it was staying a bit too moist for it, but I'm going to see how it does. We're going to, we're going to keep an eye on it and hopefully they will be happy. I love how diminutive they are and the velvety pattern on these. Oh my goodness. I mean, I mean, look at that. Like what, what on earth? I swear plants just like blow my mind, the designs of these, the, like the architecture, you know, the architecture of plants, good grief. Man, those, some of these things are just like awesome, awesome creations. I love them so much. Also, I'm experimenting with what the best lighting is here in my plant room setup for these guys. Yeah, I'd say it's about six feet away from my grow light at the ceiling and about six feet away from my Southeast window. So it's just getting residual light, um, but I'm going to experiment with the lighting and uh, the watering and everything. So this is a total experiment for me. And then the jungle velvet, I put right here a couple feet away from my window. So it's just down below the window. And then also I've got the grow light like straight above there. So I'll try it down there and see if it approves of that lighting. If I need to move it, I can always update you guys later on on where I move it to. But yeah, I'm just trying to keep it safe from spider mites. I want to keep it uh, where its soil does not dry out. And I want to make sure it still gets plenty of oxygen to the roots too, though. So it's that, that sweet spot balance that we're always after, right? I'll show you what it looks like on the leaves if the soil does stay too dense and too wet for it. It'll end up getting something similar to what you would see on an anthurium. So see that yellow spot there with a little bit of brown edging? Yeah, that's not from lack of humidity at all. That's just from the soil staying too wet. And uh, yeah, they, they don't like that. So yeah, I'll try it down there and I'll update you guys if I have to move it into different lighting. And also my main goal with it is really just to keep it from stressing out and getting spider mites. Cause oh man, spider mites, like I don't know what those taste like to spider mites. If they're like raspberry cheesecake flavored or what, but spider mites, if they get a hold of that, it's all over. <laughs> like they're so hard to get rid of on Calathea. Um, but anyway, I, I love this plant enough to try, so I'm going to try to keep it happy. 
I'm actually gonna try this plant in this plant stand. It's, it was actually in a basket before and it sat a little bit lower, but uh, it's getting bigger and I kinda need to lift it up a little bit higher. This, this will give it a little bit more lift. Um, I also need to wipe down these leaves because they're filthy. Okay, so here's what I'm using. I'm using my Captain Jacks because I think this plant may have started to get spider mites out here. Um, both of these plants, uh, the two monsteras that are out here, I've had them out here for a while. This one was in the plant room and then when I put it out here, I think it started to get some spider mites. Like I saw a tiny bit of webbing here and there and so I'm just giving it a whole, oops. <laughs> a whole spray down and um, wiping the whole thing down. Anyway, so I'm cleaning the leaves on this basically and I'm trying to keep up with that uh, to keep them dust free. I think I let it get too dusty and the spider mites are just really attracted to that. Uh, I'll talk to you guys while I'm working and cleaning here. But yeah, this Monstera Leshleriana, I've tried to have that out here and it just has not been happy out here. Like right now, for example, it's 20% humidity in my living room. Um, that's a pretty standard, like typical humidity level in here. I was going to be moving this plant eventually into the plant room where I knew it would be happier. Unfortunately, it has had mealybugs the entire time and I've been fighting them. You know what it's like to fight those things. Like you, you can try to get them, but then there's always a few that always pop up, right? So my plan is to move that into the plant room sometime once it's pest free, or I might have to take some cuttings and keep an eye on them, make sure those are pest free and then move them into the plant room. Okay, so I clearly need to do a better job of keeping these large leaf plants uh, wiped down because this is so dusty. I just, what have I been doing? What, why am I not better to you? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, the spider mites just love this dry air out here so much. I think that's why my plant room has been okay during winter because they've all been out here. <laughs> I think that's what's going on. The mealy bugs and the spider mites have been out here trying to get on the last few standing plants I have around the house here. Right in the pination too, like anywhere that would be a good, like if you were a spider mite, where would you want to string up your hammock? You know, like that's what I, that's what I look for. And it's like anywhere where there's like a little pination, you know, and you can kind of like spread your hammock across two, two palm trees. <laughs> that's where I try to wipe down. And especially in the sinus area. Oh, that's a great place for a hammock for a spider mite, right? So we want to wipe that down. All right, so did we get you? I tried to wipe down front and back. I think we got you. Did we get you up here too? Just looking at the leaves being all fresh and clean, it makes me feel like I can breathe better and I know the plant can breathe better now. I feel bad that I left it dusty for so long. I'm gonna go ahead and treat this plant right now too, just in case it has any, like the beginnings of any spider mites on there. I just wanna make sure I take care of that right away. And I think what I'm gonna do actually is probably separate it from this area and maybe move it over to that window. We're just gonna give this a spray down. Also, what I realized is the windows here get too much sun during winter time. So that is adding to this plant's stress because I was trying to give it enough light, but it hates the sun, at least here in the desert. <laughs> It's too intense for it. So I just spray on the Captain Jacks pretty liberally and then I'll kind of let that sit for a couple minutes and then I do go back over and uh, I look for any signs of pest or mealybug leftover residue and I just wipe that away just to try to help clean the plant and also wipe away any dust, you know, so it's not just like mixed with the Captain Jacks like still sitting on the leaf. I might end up putting the Euphorbia back over here because that can handle the full sun. And I might move this plant over here. You know what, let's just go ahead and do that right now, actually. Okay, I'm gonna try moving it in front of this window just temporarily, and hopefully it'll get less direct sunlight here. Okay, I'm gonna put the Euphorbia back over here in this corner, and hopefully that will be okay. This winter is gonna be all about spring cleaning for me, so that's the plan. Okay, let me grab this package. I just got a package from Amazon. All right, let's see here. Oh yeah, okay, right. So I have some packing material for my business. Uh, 
one. So I needed to get that. It's just the, um, the honeycomb paper. That's really handy for packing uh, like crystals and stuff in. So I always have to have that in stock. Um, I wasn't using it before, but it, like once I started testing it out, it works perfectly. Also that goes with it. So that's just business stuff. And then, oh yeah. Oh wow, that's huge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So I ended up ordering a turkey baster for when I water my plants in place and I have to suck the water back out of the saucers. So that'll save me some spills in the plant room, which is why I don't have any rugs in my plant room because I have overflowed many of saucers. And I got a set of three of these squeeze bottles also. So I'm able to water my lithops and euphorbia, like the little euphorbia obesus, symmetrica, uh, pseudolithos, like my really tiny potted plants. Um, that are in the plant room. It just makes it easier to control the amount of water going in there. Okay, I gotta go put those in with my shipping supplies for work and then um, these are gonna go straight into the plant room. So I was just moving around a few things in here. I just kind of repositioned the sofa and the coffee table and then also I moved that end table there. But I've got the grow light now more in the middle. The cord is going under the sofa so it's not in the way or anything back behind there. Um, but I figured I would move that grow light over that table and utilize that table for a plant there because I think that would be ideal. It won't be in the line of direct sunlight, but it'll be getting a little bit of residual natural light and at least it'll have a grow light straight above it. Okay, I just moved my yoga stuff out from the closet there. I store it away whenever we're burning fires in the fireplace, but we haven't been using the fireplace lately. I'm gonna put my yoga stuff back over here. So I just keep everything like pretty much in a basket. Yeah, I'll just put this right there where I normally do. And then the mats. I usually use two on this floor because our tile floor is so hard. So I do like double up my mats. So normally I just have that against the wall here or close to it. And then my cork mat I use on top of that, these Yoloha mats. I love these, these are awesome. I've been wanting a cork mat forever and I finally decided to go with Yoloha and that is their insignia in case you happen to see it online. Yeah, that's the brand. They are so good because they're so cushy. And then they have that extra bit of cork on top, which adds to the density of it. It's just awesome. I love these mats. And then my cork mat, I just lay over the top of that. And the bottom of it is grippy too, so it doesn't slide around, even if I have the mats doubled up or if I have it just on the floor by itself. But like I said, I double up the mats because this tile floor is just so hard. So if I'm like on my knees and stuff, um, I, I want as much cushioning as possible. And then I have my yoga mat towel that I've had for years. I think I got that in Maui at TJ Maxx, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I've, I've had that a really long time and it's still in excellent condition. I love it, I use it all the time. And these yoga blocks, these are also from Yoloha. I love these blocks. They have like a good, they're good solid block and they're not too lightweight where they kind of, you know, like shift under you. They can really hold your weight. They're like a very dense cork. So I love those. A lot of times I do have my blocks out, but I'll, for now I'll just put them back in here. But yeah, I, I do like those blocks a lot. Actually, what I like to do with this towel is either roll it or fold it in half and it just adds a nice support if you're doing restorative yoga or something. Um, so sometimes I'll use that for my neck or for my, my knees or something. But yeah, I'll just leave it like that for now. So yeah, that's my very simple yoga setup. I love the cork mat. That's like my favorite new yoga product. I love those so much. I love the feel, the natural feel on your hands and feet when you're on there. It just, I don't know, there's something about the cork I just love so much. And I always like the setup out here because I have the coffee table right here and I can set up my laptop and turn on yoga tutorials. I really love Banana Blondie's style of yoga. And so I've been a member on her website for like, I don't, I don't know how many years, well, like 2015, I think is when I first found her and became a member on her, her website. So anyway, I set up my laptop there. I turn on her website, her tutorials. I know this big wall space is pretty blank up here. I was thinking of putting like a big piece of art up there. I just haven't found like anything that really spoke to me yet. So 
I'm thinking I'll probably end up doing my own like um, desert photography shot up there. So, and I'll have it like turned into a big piece of wall art uh, sometime, sometime. Okay, let me flip you guys around this way because there's some things that I want to change on this shelf over here and a little more plant styling that I want to do. So I was thinking of changing some things back here on the shelf because the plants that I tried back here, although I tried to lush up the living room a little bit with some tropicals, uh, they didn't love it so much. So I needed to switch some things out and because our humidity is so low back here and the open floor plan, there's just no way that I can trap humidity into this area. It just immediately dissipates into the air. So I think what I'm going to do is try out some different plants that can handle lower humidity, but they're also able to be grown inside. So I was outside looking through my cactus collection, looking for someone who could make it in here and also fit on the shelf and not be too heavy. So I was outside kind of, you know, scoping things out. And I think I found the ones that will be happy up here. We're going to try them out. That's normally what I do is I, when I move plants around, I try to style them. I basically just give them, you know, like two or three months to see how they react and if they can make it or not. Okay, let me show you guys what I got. All right, check that out. Now, the thing is about this plant is it gets hairier as it gets older. Like it gets long white hairs on it. And if there was a plant that was a hybrid between an aeroid and a cactus, this is the one. This is a pendant cactus. So these are a trailing cactus. They're from Bolivia and they basically attach themselves uh, on rocks. They're epilithic. So they grow on like rock faces and steep rock um, cliffs, I guess. And they basically pendant down with these gorgeous, long, silky white hairs. They are awesome. They, they go through a little bit of a an awkward stage, you know, when they're first, when they're first growing, they're like growing vertical and then the weight of them will eventually make them start to pendant, you know, hang over the edge of the pot or rock face, you know, if they're out in the wild and then they'll start to pendant and grow straight down, which looks freaking awesome. You can still see the stem pretty well on there, right? Cause this is a pretty young plant. It doesn't have the long white hairs yet. It's like just starting to get some more hair on it, like especially towards the tips, you can see more of the white hair. But this is a Cleistocactus colidimononis. This one is gonna go on the top shelf here. And right now I do have my Soltec Solutions light turned off. I've got their pendant light, the small pendant light up there. I, I just turned that off because otherwise it'll be like, you know, the lighting will be weird here. So I wanted to uh, make sure you guys are able to see what I'm doing here. But yeah, that Soltec Solutions light, I think will be perfect for these Bolivian beauties. And since I was growing these outside, I did have to take my tweezers and clean them up because they had some debris that had fallen in the pots from the trees in our backyard. So I cleaned them up. I also gave them a pest treatment. So I sprayed them down with Captain Jack's just in case and also added a little bit of systemic in their soil. So they're all clean and fresh and ready to be grown inside now. Okay, I'm gonna go grab another pot of them because I wanted to keep the family all together. I didn't wanna split up the pots. I don't want them like some outside and some inside. I want them all to stay together. So let me grab another pot of them. Oh yeah, check that beauty out there. <laughs> I can't get it on the screen there. There we go. This one I'm gonna set down here. I love growing unique plants that have a really interesting growth pattern. You know, there's something just different about them that makes them kind of just stand out. They're a little bit out of the ordinary. That's the kind of plants that I like to grow. I like to find things like that. Did I show you guys already that I moved this Soltec Solutions light right here over this table? I don't know if I mentioned that already or not, but um, yeah, I've got it just plugged in over here. I have the cord running under the sofa and I'm just gonna direct the light like straight down overhead on, on this table for the plants I'm gonna have up here. And this is a small tabletop plant stand that I got at Ikea. I really like this a lot. It's just very simple. It's sleek. It looks, looks nice and modern. So I'm gonna grab um, the two smaller pots actually of my Colidi Mononis are gonna fit perfectly on here. So I'll grab those. Let's see, do I need a, yeah, I kinda, I think I'm gonna leave these in these little white saucers, which are actually, well, they're not actually saucers. They're, they're like little rice containers um, from Michael getting those. So anyway, um, I, I always ask him to save those for me anytime he has them. And so I just use those as saucers. Um, so that way, cause sometimes my little um, terracotta saucers, they don't like always fit in certain stands and stuff. All right, so that seems to fit okay. Cause sometimes, wait, are, is that facing the right way? Actually, let's see here. And then this one, yeah. So actually, oh, I'm, gl I'm glad, 
I've actually potted those in like the exact same size pot. So those both will fit perfect right there. Oh, on the bottom of the Ikea stand, I put felt bumpers. So that way it doesn't like, you know, like if you move it or something, it doesn't like scratch up any surfaces. So I'll try that. And then this light, that one will shine right down on there. I think that's gonna be the right distance for those guys. And let's see, I do have a couple of air plants, my tectorums from Ecuador. I can bring those out. I've had those in the plant room. So those can handle being out in the dry air. So I'll grab those. Actually, while we're filming, I'm gonna turn that off for now. And I'm gonna move these two plants out because I put these little plants down there when I was sort of like playing with different ideas of what might go on the shelf here. Um, but I don't, I don't really want these here. So I'm gonna move those back out. Also my desert rose, um, the large one, I have that overwintering inside the house. So I decided to move that from the other side of the house to this window here. So that is just gonna be overwintering there. So those go dormant during winter time, um, at least the variety that I have. Uh, I think there's some other varieties that kind of have different dormancy periods, but yeah, that one, uh, it should be totally dormant right now it's still trying to hold on to like the last of its leaves it really didn't want to give those up they're kind of just like hanging on there right now hanging on for dear life okay this might be hard to see i'm trying to block the sun for you guys but this winter sun it's so low okay maybe you guys can see better here okay there's my little tectorums these are the snowball tillandsias they're from ecuador and these are a xeric variety so they're able to handle dry air they're from an, a more arid environment so they have all these fuzzy little white hairs that are trichomes and those little white hairs help them pull in more moisture from the air and so i have actually two of them on my little air plant man stand i got this from air plant man josh he's super cool uh, i follow him on instagram and i love his style and his designs so this is the five inch vessel size and i can just attach both my air plants here i mean you could set air plants on literally anything but i just really like his really minimalist style and i like supporting a small business and care is really easy because if you need to soak your air plant, you can just pull that right out and let them soak. But normally with these, you just mist them. You don't have to soak these. So yeah, these I mist about three times a week or sometimes I will just dunk them in water. They typically say not, oh wait, I'm not doing like a care video on air plants. Okay, well, I mean I mean not in this video. <laughs> I can do that in a separate video. Um, but yeah, let me, let me not get too off track here. Anyway, I love air plants, Zurich. Mesic, I love them both, but I tend to go for the Xeric, the really white varieties. Also these Soltec solution lights, I just have to mention this, but I've been using them for almost a year now with all different kinds of plants, everything from lithops and other tiny succulents, cactus, aeroids, literally all kinds of plants. And you know what? These lights freaking kick butt. Like I love these. They are so awesome. I really want to invest in a couple more of them. So I have their Vita bulb that is in my Ikea floor lamp here. And then we have the small size pendant hanging up there above the shelf. But both of these have been awesome for growing all kinds of plants. I'm super stoked on these, especially because the color of the light. If you have plants incorporated into your everyday living spaces and you need grow lights, it's a good idea to have grow lights that are easy on the eyes. So when it comes to grow lights, I'm very particular about the color of the light, even in my plant room. So I want something that is gonna be a clean white light, but also has a hint of warmth. Like I don't want it to lean on the cool side because I just find that to be um, not as conducive to comfort at least in my, my experience, just using grow lights and being around them all the time. So I do prefer something that has a hint of warmth to them. And these Soltec solution lights are exactly that. Like the light color is beautiful on these. And the color of both of these lights are the exact same. So they match each other perfectly. And that's exactly what I wanted for my living space. Actually, I should do a separate grow light video for you guys and show you some of the different lights. I have like five other lights that you guys never see. They're in my closet right now. I think I'm just gonna sell them. Um, hopefully someone else can use them because I don't like the color of the light. If you want to check out Soltec Solutions, I do have an active coupon code that you guys can use anytime during the year. If you want to try them out, like I'd for sure recommend them. I will have my coupon code listed below. It's Aeroid Interiors, all lowercase. So I'll post that below too, but it's so worth it. In case you guys are curious what lamp I'm using, that's from Ikea. I can't remember the name of it, but if you go on Ikea and check out their floor lamps, that's where I got it. Okay, the shelf I'm going to leave 
like that for now because I can't update it until I get the crystals that I want, the specimens that I want for display uh, at the end of the month. So as soon as I get those, I'll have to do another update with you guys. And in decor, I love using natural textures and natural elements that are very sculptural. So I use a lot of wood in my decor. So I have this piece of manzanita wood. I'll just have it sitting there, Some, something like that. It's got like the root on it, which I always love those pieces. I do plan on getting another coffee table book, which is gonna be a plant book. As soon as Enid releases her book, that is gonna be on my coffee table for sure, her plant book. I can't wait for that, it's coming out in May. So I'm on the waiting list for it on Amazon. And as soon as that gets released, I'll definitely be having that on my coffee table for sure. Back there, we got our cactus wood, which I always have that. I've had that like in every video, this big piece, the big Choya um, cactus skeleton. And then I have a little piece of Choya cactus skeleton and then a piece of saguaro cactus skeleton back there too. So I just like really natural elements. It fits well with the plants. And then, you know, pieces like our coffee table and side table. And shout out to Tropical Collection by Plants of Thailand. I love their Glorios and Pillows. They sent those like, I don't know, a couple months ago. I love them. They're so pretty. They just make me so happy every time I walk into a room and see them. So I have one out here and Michael actually took the other one and it's in my plant room because he was using it as a backrest in there on my chair but yeah I, I love those so much all right guys it's another day i just want to include this unboxing because this package just came in and you know those uh the philodendrons that i sold the long hanging ones the heart leaf and the brazil i actually had sold those because i found this plant online that i really wanted whenever possible before buying a new plant i like to sell off a plant that i already have or a couple of plants and then i can take that money from the sale and roll it into whatever new plant i want to try to grow so that's what i did with this one so i ordered ordered um, this from Carnivero. It's my very first time ordering from Carnivero. I think that's con Carnivero, There's something like that. So this is a seedling. So this is a very special Anthurium seedling. It's a Cyranoi Affinis Hawaii. Oh, look at that little baby. Oh, I'm so glad it made it. I don't know what it is about Ethereum, but I have this connection to them. Like I'm really, really drawn to them. I think they're my favorite genus now. In fact, the only plants on my wish list are Ethereum. <laughs> like those are my favorite. I love them. There's just something about these plants and their adorable chunky roots and gorgeous growth pattern that I just love so much. Look at that sweet little baby root system. All healthy, beautiful, excellent. Okay, well that was my very first time ordering from Carnivero. Um, or if I'm mispronouncing that, please correct me in the comments below. It's my first time ordering from them, like I said. But yeah, I was really excited to see this hybrid on there. So Anthurium affinis serenoi Hawaii. Okay, so I'm gonna take this into the plant room and get that situated. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it back into moss and maybe in a clear cup for a while, or if I'm just gonna pot it directly into my Anthurium soil mix. So I'll have to figure that out. And I think this one is my Amazon order. Oh, I have no idea what this is. That's weird. Okay, this is not at all what I thought it was. Um, I'm so confused. Okay, uh, this is not at all what I thought it was. I thought it was just my spray bottle that I ordered on Amazon. Um, it has my address on there, but this is like uh, light bulbs. That's, that's weird. <laughs> um, okay, I'm very confused. <laughs> Let me show you guys what is in here. So uh, there's light bulbs in here which I don't know, I don't understand why, but what, how? Oh, Tucson? I guess this is from the electric company. <laughs> so I see now that they have their sticker on it, but uh, yeah, I had no idea that this was in here. New leaf, what does that mean? Does that mean that I can grow plants with this? Uh, <laughs> let me show you. Oh, I'm so confused, what is this? New leaf, does that mean is this a grow leg? Can I grow plants with this? That's like all I care about is can I grow plants with it? Okay, well, um, shoot, I was all excited thinking it was my spray bottle. My spray bottle's late by a few days, so I was waiting for it. But uh, I was not expecting um, light bulbs, but okay. 
Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll give those to Michael when he gets home. All right guys, I just decided to pot this up real quick. So it's in my Anthurium mix in a small terracotta pot and topped off with moss, how I normally do with all my Anthurium. So yeah, I'm very excited to have this little plant. And it's funny, I sold those two big philodendron plants for this little bitty thing, right? <laughs> but I love it and it's gonna be gorgeous. I can't wait to watch this grow. Okay, so I will be going to the gym shows and I'm gonna be filming them with you guys. I'm definitely gonna vlog them. Like I want to get more footage this year because I didn't get enough last year. So I'm going to try to be out there shooting more for you guys when those come around. So end of the month is when they start January 26th. So I'll be there. Um, if you guys, if you guys are out there too at the gym shows and you happen to see me <laughs> running around filming, say hi for sure. I love it when I get to meet you guys. And I think that's all. I'm starting to lose my light now. The sun is just getting ready to set. So I think that's everything. I got my little yoga set up there. I miss doing yoga this morning, but I'll be back at it tomorrow morning. All right, guys, I'll let you go and I'll see you in the next video, which is coming up right after this one. Love you guys. Bye.